Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to a, another uh, video or live stream, I guess. Still kind of new at this. Um, today, it's uh, Friday. It's kind of at the end of the day here for me. But I wanted to talk about uh, some Git stuff. And uh, so I've been trying to get this live stream to work. I've had a couple issues. So hopefully this one will be a little bit better. Um, but I want to talk about Git version control. And in today, we are going to talk about Git log and how we can use Git log to be a little bit smart, smarter about what we output and how we output things. So uh, in, the, um, in the next few minutes, this won't be um, a super long video, but in the next few minutes, we're going to look at some different log commands and what they can do and how they work. And uh, if uh, it is Friday, so I'm not sure how many people will be, will be tuning in, but maybe you're watching this later and you want to chime in on uh, some commands that you use as well. These are some that I just really like and that I found when I teach people that they actually really like them too. So we're going to focus in on that. All right, so let me fire up my uh, code editor here, or actually my... Uh, I term here. We're going to go into see what we'll use. I think we'll go ahead and just use um, my personal site here, my blog, since that's got some stuff in it, but still fairly, uh, fairly innocuous in terms of uh, of exposing things. So let's uh, look at that. So the first thing that, of course, we want to do is we're on the master branch here, but is we just run git log. And that just you know gives us the log, and we have a commit message, and an author, and a date, and all that good stuff. Um, it's just our general log output. But there's actually um, more to what we can do with Git log than than just this. And if you use a GUI uh, tool for managing uh, your your Git repositories locally, then you probably ha are you used to seeing some of this type of output, but you probably, you know, don't know the different commands that are used to make this happen. So, this is our most basic log, of course, and this, you know, just has everything that we that we need to kind of get an overview. But this is the log for the entire uh, repository at this branch. So right now we're on the master branch, um, but that might not always be what we want to see. Sometimes we want to maybe only see, you know, what's happening in like a specific directory. Uh, let's see, like, uh, like style sheets or something, right? So if I do git log and then style sheets, that's now going to restrict the log output to just commits that had something to do with a file in that style sheets directory. Um, I don't think it's actually exclusive to that, but it's, um, I believe it's has, to, you know, where some of the files have, uh, have been, or in that directory that have been changed or altered. So this is uh, what I, or what's called a directory restricted log. And it's a great way for just grabbing a quick look of what's happened in the repository in a certain directory. Um, if you're working on um, like a big monolith app where you know you've not yet sort of broken it up into smaller pieces where everybody's kind of working on this big thing but your work actually only takes place in like a directory or two then just logging out like for just a certain directory would be really really helpful um, but it's also nice to be able to see just what's happened what's happened in the assets directory what's happened in the javascript directory you know what's happened in the in the, the libs directory or something like that so you have a better idea of what's happened just and keep it focused on just that one directory. Now, similarly, we can also um, restrict by just a branch. Of course, if I just run git log and I'm on the master branch, I'm getting the log here out of the master branch. But uh, let me just see what branches I have here. I only have branch uh, master right now. But I could, if I did, um, let me just create a develop branch really quick. And now, if I look at that, so I got now I have two branches, but I have master checked out. But if I do git log develop, that's now going to output the uh, log only for the develop branch. Now, the handy thing here is that this allows you to kind of get a quick sneak peek into the work of another branch 
without having to uh, check it out and then log out. You can just do it quickly, um, pull that uh, log out and see what's going on. Now, this is assuming that you have you know that branch uh, checked out uh, locally so you can see everything that's happening there. But I really like that one. It kind of gives you a quick peek if you wanted to, if you had, especially if you had like a feature branch and you wanted to quickly see like, what was I doing again? Or like, where was I at with that? You could quickly log out just that feature branch. I think that's a, that's a pretty cool, cool thing to do. Um, another thing we can do is, so if, let's say develop, is we can restrict um, the branch, I'm sorry, the log output so it doesn't have any merges. Um, so that would be actually no merges. And this is handy because, especially if you're working like on a Git flow workflow, where uh, you're creating a lot of branches and doing a lot of merges, and you are forcing merge commits rather than accepting you know, Git's default behavior of using fast forwards, then uh, you could just have like a, a, your, your output be littered with merge commits, and um, you don't really want that. So you would want to uh, restrict that to not have merges. And let me just uh, quit out of here. And if I go in, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let me just find another one that might have that. So here I am, I can say git log. Uh, and I just have like a normal git log output. Um, don't see anything there, but let's see if I wanted to do git log, no merges like that then it actually will strip out all of the merge commits that are uh, in there. And that can be pretty handy, uh, especially in a Git flow workflow where you don't want to uh, have um, all of that stuff littered all over the place. All right, so speaking of restricting a log, that's what this is all about, just kind of narrowing it down. We can do something like since, and then equals, let's say like 8 a.m. Uh, this won't output anything in this case because I don't have anything here, but uh, if you wanted to see what you've been working on or what's been committed since 8 a.m. this morning, it's a great way, especially at the end of the day, to say, oh, what did we do today or what did I do today, depending on. Now, if it was just I, I could say git log since 8 a.m. and then author of the commits would be Ryan. Um, again, there's nothing there, but... Um, that would be a great way of showing like, what have I done today? And be able to review the work that I have done. Uh, the same way you can do things like, you know, git log since yesterday. Um, and if the since uh, option isn't working for you, you can also do before. So what about before uh, 2017, 12, 31, right? And there we go. Now we have a bunch of output. So that's this is from like November. So let's say I wanted to isolate just stuff from like October of 2017. So I would do git log before. So I need to say before, uh, let's say, so if it was for October, it would be before 2017. 1101, and then we can use after and say after 2017 um, 09, what is there, 30 days in September, I believe so. And there we go. Now we have everything just in October. You can see starting on October 3rd, we have a bunch of stuff that's just in October. And then uh, we get to the end here when we get to the October, it actually starts at October 2nd. And we get to the end because we get to the last thing. Um, it's actually that post I created about Tom Fetty. Uh, the, uh, that's the last thing that we committed then. So that is a nice handy way of restricting it just down to a single month. Like that. All right, what else can we do? Um, so before and after, these will they'll handle really any time period that you want. Um, you can do uh, really narrow it down. It's just a matter of like, just typing it out. Um, but we can also um, further like build out this log like this by adding grep. 
and then a keyword that I want to search for. Let's say I want to search for Tom Petty, like that. Um, all right, that didn't find anything. It's probably going to be case sensitive. Let me try that since that was the slug. There we go. So now we have, you can see we have here this where it says re, I renamed a file to have the dot markdown extension and uh, I created this uh, right here. So I had to be pretty explicit, but if I was looking for something very specific within a time period, I just wanted to kind of narrow it down as quickly as I could, then I could do it uh, like that. I can also add in author equals Ryan. And again, that will output the same thing if I did author equals, you know, Alex or something like that, that would output nothing because nobody named Alex actually worked on this project during that time period. So that's using grep. Um, and this is only going to search the commit message. So that's why you see it says Tom dash Petty, which is here in the commit message here and here. And again here, that's why when I searched for, um, well, when I searched for Tom Petty, that wasn't in the commit message at all. So that's why it didn't work. You know, I could also search for, you know, rename, and that'll come up with just this single commit here. So that's kind of a handy way of uh, handling the um, restricting your, your log output down to even, you know, sort of more granular so you can really look for something that you need to look for. And especially if you're on a high traffic project, that, that actually might be a really good thing to have. Um, so the, the next thing I want to look at is, is showing diffs. So let me go ahead and just chain on to this. And we can actually uh, show a diff with minus P. And whatever our output is, you know, we've specified here we want before 11 1 2017, after 930, which is essentially uh, October, or is October. And then uh, we were grepping for rename, and now minus P is going to give us the diff as the output here. And so it's going to show us the diff here as well. It's going to just actually just show us that it's been renamed. If I remove rename, then we get a little bit more of a diff output because we have another uh, commit where I'm actually making some content changes here. And um, Looks like I made maybe some edits or something like, or can't really tell what that one was. Um, but, you, oh, I fixed a typo is what that was. But you can see that, uh, that we get to see a diff. Now, this isn't so practical if we have a lot of commits, but for narrowing it down like this, where we're chaining these together, it actually comes in really handy because once I find what I'm, what I'm looking for, I can then add minus P and then see the uh, diff output. Now, you might be thinking, hey, like, you know, my, you know, GUI tool, XYZ, whatever, like, does this great, and that's true. But the thing about using this from, like, this is that this is, like, Git. This is, there's no add-ons here. This isn't anything extra. This is Git itself. And so this will work no matter what computer you're on that has Git, what workstation. It'll work all the time. And that's why I like to learn these commands right from the command line. It's why when I go teach Git that I teach it, uh, exclusively from the command line. I will add on like client apps if people request that, but the, the, the core of the, of the teaching is always done from the command line because you can never go wrong here. There's never going to be a difference. You know, if, you, if you're here, if you go to like a Windows computer, if you go to, you know, Mac OS computer or a Linux machine, you're still going to be using Git. So it's always going to be the same. That's why I always teach right from the command line. All right. So uh, one more I want to do before I wrap up for today, since it is Friday, it's time to get out of here, um, is to look at git log with graph. And I like this because I can uh, then see some graphical output. And that's this red line on the left here um, where you can see you can see it kind of merging back in right here. This is a merge commit. Remember, the, the earlier the history is down further down. So what we're seeing here is a merge, not a branch. So this merge right here. So you can see a merge commit. And if I go down, you can see some more branching and merging right here. So I like this because it gives me a graphical like output of, of what's happening with the, um, with the repository. And again, you can get this in some tools as well, but it's also available right here in Git without any extra software and on any platform. 
So that is what I wanted to uh, cover in this stream on some Git stuff that I uh, that I really like to, to use. This is stuff that I like to use a lot. Um, some of my favorite uh, commands are you know ways of using Git log to handle things a little bit better. I think on Fridays I might maybe throw out some more Git stuff. We'll see how it goes. I do my some of my scheduled uh, live streams on Tuesdays, and then on Fridays uh, I'll probably hop on at some point and do something like this, go through something a little bit more informal and try to uh, check out um, some new stuff, maybe on Git, maybe, um, I don't know what, we'll see. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.